All right, well, as a child growing up, I was the kid in Halloween where I would get all the candy and uh, wait a week or two, then resell the candy in school. You know, that's the kind of kid I was. Uh, my father, uh, originally from New York, my mom is from Japan, and uh, they met over in Hawaii, and I was born, you know, in 82. Um, by the time I was seven, my, my biological father and my mother, they had problems and they had a divorce. Okay, so at seven I had no, uh, you know, biological dad. Of course I'd see him on the weekends and stuff, but, uh, you know, it was a tough time in life. You know, as a kid, your dad all of a sudden, as a kid, you know, all of a sudden your dad not being around anymore and I used to see the fights in the kitchen and all of that. Uh, you know, you were young, you really don't understand what's going on, you know, and uh, by the time I was seven and a half, my wife, my mom had already been sort of seeing uh, th my stepfather, they used to work in the same restaurant, he was the, the head cook of the, of the place and she was a waitress. So that's how they met and, you know, my dad, my biological dad, my mom's relationship was always rocky, you know, for a, for a while, ever since I was about ever since I was about five or so. So my mom already knew things weren't gonna go well. So she, you know, kind of looking serious for another another father figure for me. So by the time I was close to eight, uh, eight, eight and a half, I, I moved in with my stepfather and mom. We all moved into a house together. And, uh, and life began like that. I remember when I was uh, around eight, nine years old, uh, my stepfather, a big thing, he had moved from Japan to Hawaii and, and they brought him there with the job. So he, he was basically working in Waikiki and biking in Waikiki. He had no car or anything. He was just riding his bicycle to work. And then it came to a point where I need some transportation. So he bought a moped. In late 89, he bought himself a, a Honda Elite. Uh, e, a 50cc moped like this one here. This is a, a 98, but a little slimmer model than this one. And uh, I remember on the weekends, you know, like when I was nine, 10 years old, he used to take me and we used to go riding up the mountain, like at the Pali Lookout in Hawaii. And I just was fascinated about getting on the bike and just riding around with it. I used to sit in the front of him, hold, hold the top of the bike, you know, up in here area. And we used to just ride through and I loved the bike. It was just an amazing breakthrough for me. It was an, it's like riding a, a motorized thing that can go on the roads and it was just the coolest thing for me, you know? And then, you know, years went by, uh, 1994, they bought a house. Okay, so we ended up moving uh, from, we were renting this, you know, we were renting a house to, to owning a house uh, in 1994 and I was 12 years old at the time. Uh, but before that, while I was 10, 11 years old, I, he used to teach me how to ride the thing and I was already riding the moped by myself at 10 years old in the parking lot, you know, just riding it around, getting used to it, and I just loved it, you know? So we moved in into a big house in 1994. I was 12 years old, the bigger house, you know? And uh, he was like, he didn't have the moped anymore. He had a car. And at that time, he graduated, you know, from moped, first from bicycle to moped, now he had a car, you know? So now that he had a car, the moped was just sitting on the side, you know? He wasn't doing anything with it. It was five years old at that time. And uh, so one day, you know, he was like, we, we had a conversation with him, he's like, you want it? I'm like, fine, I want it, you know, give it to me, you know? So uh, at that time, it was kind of beat up, you know? I had scratches all over it, it was all beat up. He was like, I'll give it to you. You can do whatever you want with it. So I was like, cool, but he was the type of guy who if he did something for me, he wouldn't intervene. Yeah, that would be it. No advice, no nothing. It would just be here, do what you want with it. That's it, you know, no intervene. My mother was not into mechanics or mechanical stuff. She didn't know anything about buying or selling cars or anything like that. So she, they left me alone. So what I ended up doing was I took the whole moped apart, right? Took all the plastic panels off sanded everything down and I got some of this influence from my biological father. I used to hang out at a shop once in a while, but I never did any type of work there. You know, I just used to watch a lot. I was constantly watching on the weekends. Sometimes during a week after school, he'd pick me up and I would hang around the auto body shop to learn. Uh, but I never expressed any interest to him directly until I ended up painting my own moped uh, by myself at home. 
you know so like back to the story I, uh, I ended up sanding the whole thing down I had aerosol cans I bought from Home Depot and I got those little attachments that you could put on the aerosol can and you could pull the trigger and kind of spray like a, like a spray can, like a, like a regular sprayer. So I bought one of those, I sanded it all down and I painted it hunter green. It was like a military hunter green. Uh, gloss, but it didn't look that glossy. You know, I did all that, it looked great. I did all the black on the panels and made it look all nice looking. And then I was like, I'm gonna sell it. You know, I'm gonna sell, I'm gonna make some money. I'm gonna sell it. So I put in the paper. Uh, back then there was no online classified, right? This is in 1994. I put it in the paper, advertised it myself, uh, and uh, I sold it. I think I put it in for like 600 bucks. I had no idea at that time, like how much the thing was worth or whatever. I didn't bother talking to my dad about it. Uh, my stepfather, they, like I said, they didn't intervene. I put it in the paper myself. Um, sent, I, I remember I, I sent them a picture of it that I wanted in the paper by mail. And uh, I sent the money in the mail. My mom wrote a check, I gave her the money. <clears throat> and then we got the thing posted in the local penny saver. And I remember the first guy that came to take a look at it bought it. And uh, I had it in for 600, he came. He was probably in his 30s, you know, he looked like an older kid to me and I was like, kinda like, like wow, some older guy's gonna be buying a bike from me. You know, I remember that feeling. And I was 12 years old. I remember he called the house. He's like, yeah, I'm on the way or whatever. So I was outside the house waiting for him. He showed up and I did the deal all by myself. My parents weren't even there. I was 12 years old. I sold the mo. I had the title in my hand and everything and I sold the moped right there in front of my house with no adult supervision. It was crazy. But uh, so anyway, he told me, look, I'll give you 400 cash for it. And for me, it was like, cha-ching. You know, I didn't even bother negotiating. I didn't even know, like, what to do in, for negotiation. I probably didn't even know the definition of negotiation at that time, you know? It was like, uh, wow, cool, I got the money. So after that, you know, my dad heard word of it, my biological dad. And he was, like, blown away. Like, I didn't, you should have told me you were working on this moped, you know, like, doing all this stuff. I would have helped you out with advertising and getting it, you know, Anyway, he was blown away that I actually had interest in this stuff, kind of like what he was doing, you know, the, the painting and the, sand, you know, selling of cars and, and stuff. So uh, he was like, Tony, why don't you, why don't we set you up and I'll help you learn to, to buy and sell, you know, a, a, on, a, on, a, on another level. Like I'll help you do this like for an income so you could do this and really make some money at it. Because at that time, I also had a paper route. You know, I had my little Mongoose 21 speed uh, mountain bike and uh, I would have a paper route every single day. I was doing a paper route, waking up at 5 a.m., delivering the papers, going to school, rain or shine, you know, I'd have my, my rain suit just in case, and I was on my mountain bike delivering papers to like 350 homes every single day. Uh, and, and I was probably making around $250 a month or so, right, doing the paper route, 250 a month, but I remember Christmas, ended up with like two or three hundred bucks in tips like people would give me 20 bucks some some families would give me 50 bucks old senior citizens you know for Christmas it was like the best time and I only did it for a year so I was glad to experience the, uh, the Christmas season you know I got a whole bunch of tip money and it was incredible but uh, so my dad was like yeah why don't I why don't we like start doing this I'll teach you how to buy and sell so I started looking in classified magazines looking for mopeds and cheap used bikes that I can get and we would find them we would find them and my dad would help me go pick them up uh, he would teach me how to negotiate like stick to your price like when we, I remember we went to go look at this uh, this is like after I did a couple of mopeds yeah we went to go look at this Honda Rebel I forgot I forgot what year it was but it was a Honda Rebel 250 we went to the place negotiate it was a lady right uh, and she wanted I don't know maybe she wanted like 1200 bucks for the thing, but I know I got it for around 800 uh, So she was like no no, I don't want you know she She said no, and then we were walking away to the car, right? We were walking away because I said I'm not gonna spend below uh, Above 800 bucks, you know, that was my kind of bottom line that my father and I agreed on So we were walking away. And she was like alright alright at the very last minute when we were like opening the handle to get into the car She's like, never mind, I don't want it, I want it. So I was like, really? So uh, we ended up buying it. My dad had a van, uh, actually uh, an old Ford, an old Ford vans. You know those old 79 or 78 or 79 Ford Echo Star, whatever economy, Echo line, whatever, I forgot what model it was, but it was those old Ford vans with the round headlights in the front. 
and uh, we just loaded it up back there. My dad, one of his buddies was with us. We loaded it back in the truck and, uh, and we left. So I ended up painting that and selling that as well. But uh, that was the beginning of my buying and selling. I started with mopeds. Um, and then I remember after the moped, I did a couple of mopeds and I got the 89, Honda, the 89 YSR50, uh, which is the green bike over here that I recently got just to add to my collection as a reminder. <clears throat> Um, it was a, a kid in my local community, uh, older brother. I, knew, I used to hang out with the boys. His older brother was in his 20s. He's like, yeah, I'm gonna sell my bike. So I, I think he was asking 1,300, I got it for 1,000. I needed to borrow money from my mother. My mother gave me like 500 bucks to buy it. <clears throat> she never asked for the money back. Thanks, mom. The 89 Yamaha YSR50 was actually one of the first projects that I did with real automotive paints, not a spray can spray paint. You know, that was the first time I actually learned from my dad and his friend, uh, he had a partner at the shop, uh, learned the real true standards of auto body and how to spray with professional automotive paints. And I'm pretty sure I completed that by the time I was 13, 12 and a half or 13. Within those months, I ended up spraying my first professional paint job on, uh, on this YSR50 and I, uh, I, I remember I sold it for 2,500 bucks, maybe about six to eight months later. I did a frame off restoration on it. Uh, hopefully you could see some of the pictures. But uh, that was my introduction to professional auto body and paint. So by the time I was 14, 15, I must have flipped dozens of mopeds and motorcycles. Uh, I was making a few thousand a month consistently. My friends were like, how are you making all this money? Uh, I would always have the coolest moped or ride around you know, with, with all the kids. And I, I remember at that point when I was 14, 14 years old and on, I, would, I was basically buying all of my necessities. My parents didn't have to buy me anything anymore. I was buying my own clothes, my own toys, my own everything, stereo systems, whatever you want, you know, I was buying it. In Hawaii, when you're 15 years old, you can have your driver's license. 14 and nine months old, you can get your permit. 15, you can get your car and your driver's license. By the time I was 15, I had my car and my driver's license. What a deadly combination for a 15 year old. So it got to the point where in the mornings I would leave for school and uh, just turn around, go to a friend's house, pick up some friends and go to the beach. You know, it was, it was pretty bad like that. So. I dropped out, you know, I dropped out of high school and sophomore, 15 years old. And uh, my dad was like, you know, my parents were like concerned, what are you gonna do? I mean, you got, this is, this is not good, you know, you're not doing good in school. Why don't you go live with your brothers in New York? That was my dad's big idea, you know. Why don't you go live in New York? Your brothers will straighten you out. I had two half brothers in New York, born and raised in New York. At that time, when I was 16, one brother was 32 and the other one was uh, 34. I lived with the 32-year-old, Johnny, for about 10 months. Uh, he was a, he's a contractor in New York. He did all types of home improvement repairs and all that. So I worked with him for 10 months, um, full-time during the day, uh, remodeling, doing kitchens and weather, you know, all that stuff on houses and stuff. And uh, at night, I would go to school and get my GED. So I got my GED, passed the test, and I, I moved back to Hawaii when I was 17 and uh, got hooked up with a girl, you know, made some mistakes, whatever. Uh, got, went to college, you know, went to auto mechanics in college. Uh, and then after that, it was like, what am I going to do? You know, what am I going to do? So I ended up getting back into the auto body industry, you know, serious, full time, hardcore, buying and selling a ton of cars, going to auctions, and just making a ton of money uh, doing customer jobs, custom paint jobs. Of course, buying and selling my own cars, getting them at auctions, just getting cars at deals, fixing them up, putting paint jobs on them and selling them. And you know, I was doing really well, really, really well. By the time I was 25, I was like, uh, wow, I, I really love doing this. I wanna start teaching this. So I started going online and looking up like auto body things and just stuff in general and couldn't find a real site that I liked, you know? So I was like, man, I should start doing something of my own online, you know? So I did my own thing online. I, I started uploading YouTube videos in 2008. 
and uh, it started growing and growing and I just kept on adding more content and, and helping out and created the website. That's basically how my sites were born. You know, and that's uh, pretty much my story now. You know, I love doing what I'm doing. I still do auto body and paint. It's, it's a passion of mine, it's a hobby. I make money with it, I love teaching it. And uh, I just wanna spread the passion. There's so many people out there who just don't know what to do. They're, they're confused about the whole step-by-step -step process. Even if it's painting a car, painting a bike. You know, they're just so confused about the process. And I wanna get the word out. I wanna help people learn how to buy and sell cars for profits. I wanna help them learn how to customize and put cool paint jobs on cars and all of that. And that's why I recently picked this thing up. I got it up at a super deal over in Houston area. I picked this thing up a couple of weeks ago. I got it for 1200 bucks. It's a super deal. Original owner uh, has over 800 miles on it, original. So I decided to, to pick it up and uh, keep it as a reminder. I'm gonna fully restore it. We're gonna put an awesome paint job on it, fix all the scratches. The old man uh, had an RV and he bought it to cruise around the campgrounds, you know, to go to the bathrooms and take a shower and stuff or whatever and go buy food or whatever at camping grounds. And uh, he just had it hooked up on the back of his RV in, in those little crates, you know. Uh, it's just a reminder of how I started. You know, this moped is basically how I started. The first generation of this moped is how I started at, uh, at 10 years old. From riding it to painting it and selling it, making money with it and, uh, and rolling and, and doing all of that. So that's basically my story in a nutshell. Great, when we're doing this interview, it starts to pour outside. That's pretty cool though. <laughs> How does it feel to do cool paint jobs? Well, it feels amazing. I mean, being able to take uh, a rusted out beater and turn it into something gorgeous is uh, is a valuable skill. It's really amazing to be able, you know, you get that DIY pride, so to say, you know, it, when you're being able to bang out things like that. You get that self-reliance that you want to feel and it just feels really good And to step back and say, hey, I did that. And when people ask you, you can proudly say, yeah, I did that, you know, it's, it's just really neat. My daughter, does she get into it? No, not really. You know, she loves paints. She's very good with art. She's good with colors and, you know, matching different colors together. Like, you know, she does drawings and then the colors are so unbelievable in the, in the coloring. Uh, she loves what I do. She has an interest, but, you know, of course, I'm not going to push her to get into auto body. I wouldn't want her to get into it anyway. If I had a son, that would be a different story. You know, I, I teach him everything I know about it. And, uh, and get them to, to start doing all kinds of cool things with, with auto body and painting and more. I would probably push him more into the graphic side of it because I was never really an artist, so to say. Like, I was never good in drawing. I'd probably push him toward, you know, if he was naturally good at it, again, you know, if, if he wasn't naturally good at it or never had an interest, I wouldn't push him to do anything. But uh, yeah, right now I have two girls. I don't have any sons, so I guess I don't have to worry about that. What does having this skill do for me? Well, you know, growing up, I always had the coolest car, you know, and some of the, some of my friends were jealous. Some of them were happy about it because they, because I was able to help them on their projects, you know. I remember painting friends' cars and painting my friend's dad's cars, you know, and everybody knew I was like the car painter, you know, so everybody was always knocking on my door about that. But uh, it, it made me, realized that I had a, a skill that was valuable, you know, and it, uh, it opened doors for me as far as being able to enter car shows with customer cars and some of my cars and uh, just being able to work on cool classics and meeting a lot of people in the community, you know, in the automotive community. Uh, and just having the, the self-confidence and knowing that, oh yeah, I could do that. Oh, that's not a big deal, you know. Just you know, having that ability to look at something and, and know how much it's gonna take, know how much effort, time, work it's gonna take to, to do something and make it turn out like a dream product, you know? What do I wanna tell the people out there who wanna learn the trade? 
Um, well, you know, thank God to the internet now. There's so much information out there. I think uh, it's getting easier for people to learn what they want to learn. Uh, but my only recommendation is follow somebody and learn from somebody that you like uh, and that you know that has experience with it. You know, don't follow. There's a lot of people uh, with the internet. Anybody can say anything. You know, you can have Mr. John in his backyard, you know, whatever, who doesn't really have much experience, tell you a bunch of his opinions on it, and it could be the wrong opinions. You know what I mean? So, I mean, the thing is just follow somebody you know, like, and trust, and somebody that you know that can help you get to the next level. You know, that's, that's what I would say. What could newbies or people that want to get into auto body expect from Learn Auto Body and Paint.com? Well, they can expect to learn something in a step-by-step -step format. You know, I like, I love to teach, and when I try to train, and when I when I teach and train in my videos, I like to talk to people as if they're my buddies. You know, they're my friends. I'm showing you this step, this step, and take you through the whole complete process. Because I know a lot of trainings out there are incomplete. You know, they. They show you the cool parts and what they're doing, but they don't show you the in-between mess-ups or if something happens, then what do they do? You know, they don't show you that. I like to reveal everything. I like to show people every single step of the way and guide them toward all of that. And, and I also like to show them my goof-ups because if I make a mistake, I don't cut it out. I'll purposely leave it in there and show you, all right, this is how I would tackle the situation and this is how you would want to do the same if you end up in that situation as well. You know what I mean? They can expect to get their confidence level, you know, busting out from the seams. You know, I'll have them, I have guys, uh, either young kids or older seniors, go through my trainings and just be so confident that they can do it. And uh, start banging out their own projects, you know, that never done before to completing paint jobs. We have students opening up their own body shops just from the trainings that Learn Auto Body VIP. So I'm, I'm really happy and thankful for that. We get testimonials rolling in every single day, and uh, it's just uh, it's it's very humbling to, to to know that all of these people are being helped, you know, and uh, I, I enjoy doing it. I know a lot of guys that are afraid to get started because they're afraid of the mistakes that they're gonna make, you know? Not really the money, because yeah, you might spend a couple hundred on paint and, and waste your money, but it's not the money, it's the fear of making a mistake or screwing their job up worse than it is. But the reality is, if you wanna get into this, you have to do, you have to watch like crazy first, and then you have to do. No, you have to, See the step-by-step -step process. All right, this is how, this is what I did when I was a kid growing up. I used to just watch my father, my biological dad, work on cars. I never touched a car, like I said, until I was like 13, but I started working on mopeds on my own at 12, you know? Just from watching him, I got experience, and, uh, and then I actually knew what to do without him there. And once I basically painted and completed my own moped and sold it, he, he was amazed at that, so he kind of took me under his wing even more and said, all right, let me, you know, let me teach you auto body and paint if you want to learn it. And, and then I got my YSR 50. Then with that, I did the, the custom paint with it with professional automotive finishes, not the aerosol cans, you know? And it came out really, really nice. And after that, I mean, we did a, I remember I did a pearl, I did a white with pearl, red pearl in it. So it came out really, really nice. The rims and frame I did red. So it was a two-tone white and red and we put like all the decals on. It came out really, really nice. I was really proud of that motorcycle. I even had the engine blueprinted and balanced at, uh, at the dealer. They completely redid the engine for me. I think the Honda dealer for me did it for me. It was a, it was a Yamaha. But the Honda dealer uh, did it for me. I think, no, 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 no. It was a combination. They, they, had, they sold Honda bikes and Yamaha bikes and all of that, so. Last word to the to people checking out my uh, to the website. Uh, I just want to say thanks for checking the website out. I hope you kind of learned more about me through the through this interview, through the story. I enjoyed doing it, and uh, you know if you're if you're looking to learn about auto body and paint, check out what we have here. There's a ton of free information and a lot of the free videos that I give away. 
But you know, if you're serious and you want to really look into it and take your your skills to the next level, you know, really check out the VIP course. It's a drop in the bucket compared to what you're gonna get out of it. You know, it's an amazing investment if you could jump in and be VIP. Uh, I, I guarantee you it's gonna be worth it or your money back. Thanks, bye-bye.